the Valley of the Kings, the Valley of the Gates of the Kings, is a valley in Egypt where, for a period of nearly 500 years from the 16th to 11th century BC, tombs were constructed for the pharaohs and powerful nobles of the New Kingdom. The valley stands on the west bank of the Nile, opposite Thebes, within the heart of the Theban necropolis. The wadi consists of two valleys, East Valley and West Valley. With the 2005 discovery of a new chamber, and the 2008 discovery of two further tomb entrances, the valley is known to contain 63 tombs and chambers. It was the principal burial place of the major royal figures of the Egyptian New Kingdom, as well as a number of privileged nobles. The royal tombs are decorated with scenes from Egyptian mythology and give clues to the beliefs and funerary rituals of the period. Almost all of the tombs seem to have been opened and robbed in antiquity, but they still give an idea of the opulence and power of the pharaohs. This area has been a focus of archaeological and Egyptological exploration since the end of the 18th century, and its tombs and burials continue to stimulate research and interest. In modern times the valley has become famous for the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun, and is one of the most famous archaeological sites in the world. In 1979, it became a World Heritage Site, along with the rest of the Theban necropolis. Exploration, excavation and conservation continues in the valley, and a new tourist center has recently been opened. Geology the types of soil where the Valley of the Kings is located are an alternating sandwich of dense limestone and other sedimentary rock and soft layers of marl. The sedimentary rock was originally deposited between 35 to 56 million years ago during a time when the precursor to the Mediterranean Sea covered an area that extended much further inland than today. During the Pleistocene the valley was carved out of the plateau by steady rains. There is currently little year-round rain in this part of Egypt, but there are occasional flash floods that hit the valley dumping tons of debris into the open tombs. The quality of the rock in the valley is inconsistent, ranging from finely grained to coarse stone, the latter with the potential to be structurally unsound. The occasional layer of shale also caused construction and conservation difficulties, as this rock expands in the presence of water, forcing apart the stones surrounding it. It is thought that some tombs were altered in shape and size depending on the types of rock the builders encountered. Builders took advantage of available geological features when constructing the tombs. Some tombs were quarried out of existing limestone clefts, others behind slopes of scree, or were at the edge of rock spurs created by ancient flood channels. The problems of tomb construction can be seen with tombs of Ramesses III and his father Setnikta. Setnikta started to excavate KV-11 but broke into the tomb of Amun Mesa, so construction was abandoned and he instead usurped the tomb of Tusret. KV-14 When looking for a tomb, Ramesses III extended the part excavated tomb started by his father. The tomb of Ramesses II returned to an early style, with a bent axis, probably due to the quality of the rock being excavated. Between 1998 and 2002 the Armana Royal Tombs project investigated the valley floor using ground-penetrating radar and found that, below the modern surface, the valley's cliffs descend beneath the scree in a series of abrupt, natural, shelves, arranged one below the other, descending several meters down to the bedrock in the valley floor. Hydrology The area of the Theban Hills is subject to infrequent violent thunderstorms, causing flash floods in the valley. Recent studies have shown that there are at least seven active flood stream beds, leading down into the central area of the valley. This central area appears to have been flooded at the end of the 18th dynasty and buried several tombs under meters of debris. The tombs KV-63, KV-62 and KV-55 are dug into the actual wadi bedrock rather than the debris showing that the then level of the valley was 5 meters below its present level. After this event, later dynasties leveled the floor of the valley, making the floods deposit their load further down the valley. 
and the buried tombs were forgotten and only discovered in the early 20th century. This was the area that was the subject of the Armana Royal Tombs Project ground scanning radar investigation, which showed several anomalies, one of which was proved to be KV-63. History The Theban hills are dominated by the peak of al Kern, known to the ancient Egyptians as Tardahent or the peak. It has a pyramid-shaped appearance, and it is probable that this echoed the pyramids of the Old Kingdom. More than a thousand years prior to the first royal burials carved here, its isolated position also resulted in reduced access, and special tomb police were able to guard an acropolis. While the iconic pyramid complexes of the Giza Plateau have come to symbolize ancient Egypt, the majority of tombs were cut into rock. Most pyramids and master base contain sections which are cut into ground level, and there are full rock-cut tombs in Egypt that date back to the Old Kingdom. After the defeat of the Hyksos and the reunification of Egypt under Amos I, the Theban rulers began to construct elaborate tombs that would reflect their newfound power. The tombs of Amos and his son Amenhotep I were probably in the 17th dynasty necropolis of Dra Abu el Naga. The first royal tombs in the valley were those of Amenhotep I and Thutmose I whose advisor are in any notes in his tomb that he advised his king to place his tomb in the desolate valley. The valley was used for primary burials from approximately 1539 BC to 1075 BC, and contains at least 63 tombs beginning with Thutmose I and ending with Ramesses X or she, although non-royal burials continued in usurped tombs. Despite the name of the Valley of the Kings also contains the tombs of favorite nobles as well as the wives and children of both nobles and pharaohs, meaning that only about 20 of the tombs actually contain the burials of kings, the burials of nobles and the royal family. Together with unmarked pits and embalming caches make up the rest. Around the time of Ramesses the first construction commenced in the separate Valley of the Queens. Royal Necropolis The official name for the site in ancient times was the great and majestic necropolis of the millions of years of the pharaoh, life, strength, health in the west of Thebes, or more usually, Tar Sekhet Maat. At the start of the 18th dynasty, only the kings were buried within the valley in large tombs, when a non-royal was buried. It was in a small rock-cut chamber, close to the tomb of their master. Amenhotep III's tomb was constructed in the Western Valley, and while his son Akhenaten moved his tomb's construction to Armana, it is thought that the unfinished WV-25 may have originally been intended for him. With the return to religious orthodoxy at the end of the 18th dynasty, Tutankhamun, I and then Hormheb returned to the royal necropolis. The 19th and 20th dynasties saw an increase in the number of burials, with Ramesses II and later Ramesses III constructing a massive tomb that was used for the burial of his sons. There are some kings that are not buried within the valley or whose tomb has not been located. Thutmose II may have been buried in Dra Abu el Naga. Smenker's burial has never been located, and Ramesses VIII seems to have been buried elsewhere. In the Pyramid Age, the tomb of the king was associated with a mortuary temple located close to the pyramid. As the tomb of the king was hidden, this mortuary temple was located away from the burial, closer to the cultivation facing towards Thebes. These mortuary temples became places visited during the various festivals held in the Theban necropolis, most notably the beautiful festival of the valley, where the sacred barks of Amun-Ri, his consort Mut and son Khonsu left the temple at Karnak in order to visit the funerary temples of deceased kings on the west bank and their shrines in the Theban necropolis. The tombs were constructed and decorated by the workers of the village of Deir el Medina, located in a small wadi between this valley and the Valley of the Queens, facing Thebes. The workers journeyed to the tombs via routes over the Theban hills. The daily lives of these workers are quite well known, recorded in tombs and official documents.
Amongst the events document is perhaps the first recorded worker strike, detailed in the Turin strike papyrus. Exploration of the Valley The area has been a major area of modern Egyptological exploration for the last two centuries. Before this the area was a site for tourism in antiquity. This area illustrates the changes in the study of ancient Egypt, starting as antiquity hunting, and ending as scientific excavation of the whole Theban necropolis. Despite the exploration and investigation noted below, only 11 of the tombs have actually been completely recorded. Many of the tombs have graffiti written by these ancient tourists. Jules Baylet located over 2,100 Greek and Latin graffiti, along with a smaller number in Phoenician, Cypriot, Lycian, Coptic, and other languages. The majority of the ancient graffiti are found in KV9, which contains just under a thousand of them. The earliest positively dated graffiti dates to 278 BC. In 1799, members of Napoleon's expedition to Egypt drew maps and plans of the known tombs, and for the first time noted the Western Valley. The description de l'Egypte contains two volumes on the area around Thebes. European exploration continued in the area around Thebes during the 19th century. Boosted by Champollion's translation of hieroglyphs early in the century. Early in the century, the area was visited by Belzoni, working for Henry Salt, who discovered several tombs, including those of I in the West Valley in 1816 and Seti I the next year. At the end of his visits, Belzoni declared that all of the tombs had been found and nothing of note remained to be found. Working at the same time was Bernardino Droverti, the French consul general. When Gaston Maspero was reappointed to head the Egyptian Antiquities Service, the nature of the exploration of the valley changed again. Maspero appointed English archaeologist Howard Carter as the chief inspector of Upper Egypt and the young man discovered several new tombs and explored several others clearing KV-42 and KV-20. Around the start of the 20th century, the American Theodore M. Davis had the excavation permit in the valley, and his team discovered several royal and non-royal tombs. In 1907 they discovered the possible Amarna period cache in KV-55. After finding what they thought was all that remained of the burial of Tutankhamun, it was announced that the valley was completely explored and no further burials were to be found. In Davis's 1912 publication, The Tombs of Harm Habi and Tuat and Karmanau, the book closes with the comment, I fear that the Valley of Kings is now exhausted. After Davis's death early in 1915 Lord Carnarvon acquired the concession to excavate the valley, and he employed Carter to explore it. After a systematic search they discovered the actual tomb of Tutankhamun in November 1922. Various expeditions have continued to explore the valley, adding greatly to the knowledge of the area. In 2001 the Theban mapping projects designed new signs for the tombs, providing information and plans of the open tombs.